Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to explore a little more into the topic of last week, which was we were talking about the micro and macro cosmic orbit. And uh, I'd like to explore that and uh, touch on something that uh, came up, question came up regarding uh, points along the back that uh, can, can actually block the energy. So uh, just uh, to clarify, when we're talking about the microcosmic orbit, that refers to getting in touch, being aware of the energy filling the uh, two primary vessels, the Renmon, the Duma, the governing vessel, and the conception vessel. The conception vessel is along the center line of the front of the body. The governing vessel is on the uh, on the rear, the uh, posterior. So the at uh, the in Chinese in, in acupuncture, it's it, it's considered that there's there's a the governing vessel begins at the tailbone point called the Wei Lu and goes up along your spine over the top of your head down to here. And uh, then there's a break and the uh, conception vessel begins at the Hui Yin or the, the uh, perineum. There's a, there's a point at the perineum which then moves up and goes up to the underside of the lip. And so between the upper and the lower, there is a, a gap. Also at, at the uh, anus, there is a, a gap as well. So between the, the Wei Lu and the Hui Yin, there's a gap. And so the idea there is to close the, that circuit by lifting gently on your perineum and just sort of like a, like a soft Kegel exercise. So there's no clenching there. It's just sort of just a gentle, ah, just a lifting. And um, you, uh, that will make the connection there. The other places, you put that tongue uh, right behind your teeth there on, the, on the, uh, the, the palate behind the teeth. And that connects up the, those two uh, uh, vessels. And whenever you do that, you, when you bring awareness to the, the, the circulation in those, it creates a reservoir of chi, which feeds the 12 meridians, uh, which is kind of cool and something that is highly encouraged. The important thing to remember is that you're doing it anyway. If you're alive, it's happening. It just, there may be enough kinks in the hose that cause it to kind of reduce to a trickle and which point your reservoir is running dry and which will have an effect on your meridians. So it'll throw things out of whack. And, and so you don't have that, that extra oomph there to fill the meridians and also to drain off excesses in the meridians. So there's, it's a, uh, uh, highly desirable to be able to allow the energy to to move freely through your uh, your 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 lesser circulation or your the circulation in the, uh, the 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 conception vessel and the governing vessel. So anyway, the microcosmic orbit is is that it is being aware of this flow, this presence of energy, and and. I tend to not think of it as a uh, as a flow so much as just a filling. So the uh, that the energy is you're either full or you're not. You're there, there, there's a kink there. Then then is like you're there's an interruption in the in the energy. But whenever you get whenever it's filled, it's like filling up a garden hose. There's a uh, you know the the hose. If you have the nozzle is turned off, the hose is full. And since it's not going anywhere, it just, it's just a full hose, which creates a highly coherent state. So, and, and so when we think about that, it's, we're thinking about it kind of as a closed system. That is the energy 
is not going anywhere. It's it's just inside you and it you're circulating it or you're holding on to it or you're gathering it or whatever. When we're talking about a, mic a macrocosmic orbit, that's the grand circulation. Now we're kind of opening up the system and we're plugging into the big G. So we're still circulating or filling the, uh, the, I'm going to call it circulating for now, just because that's the, the traditional way of doing it. And the you're still doing that with the those two vessels, but you're also adding on a connection to the earth through the through the the bubbling well points in the ball of your balls of your feet, or at the bottom of your feet, you know. And we do that by feeling into the balls of the feet and allowing that energy contact with the with the earth. So that allows the earth chi to rise, it kind of fills into there. And then we also reach with the crown of the head and that opens up the jade pillow gate and allows for the energy, the energy of the heavens to come down through and the yang chi to move through. So what that does is it kind of, your energy is coming in, the yin chi is coming up, the yang chi is coming down and what that creates kind of a turbine effect in the uh, in the body, which you then circulate through the through your vessels, and uh, and it's a happiness. So the uh, that's that's the basic difference between the uh, between the two. And um, like I said before, you know, it's happening. You know, there's a lot of um, um, warnings about doing it prematurely before you've prepared. And um, that, that, that should be heated. But at the same point, there's a, um, it's, energy is circulating there. So what we're, what I'm encouraging is just bring awareness to it, which is going to increase the circulation, but it's not going to do anything harmful unless you try to force the energy. And we're doing uh, the opposite. We're kind of just witnessing the energy. We're not pushing it. And, you know, it just, the principle of the E leads the Chi or the mind leads the energy and the Chi leads the blood is, is very much at play here. So that is, as you bring your awareness to different points along the path, the energy goes there. And, and so with that, also your body fluids, your blood, but also your lymph and, and synovial fluid and all the, uh, the, the fluids of the body kind of are circulating better by the fact that the chi is circulating better. So um, that sort of brings us up to, up to date. And uh, what I want to discuss today is something that came up was the the obstructions that, that can appear. And, and the primary ones, the ones I covered last week, and were primarily at the, at the, at the point there, at the anus where there's, there's a gap, you know, and if you, um, the Ming Men is, which is, you know, right here, just opposite your, your navel and your lower back, right there at the uh, L3, the third lumbar. So that's a, uh, that's a point there where you want to, uh, uh, you want to open up. It's called the gate of life. That's, and so it's a, uh, it's an important energy point. Um, the other one that I mentioned was at the, uh, at the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. So that's what, that's an easy one. You can feel that if you know, your, your neck is kind of kinked there, you know, you'll, you'll get, you know, a sore neck, you'll get, uh, Tense, you know, shoulders will kind of creep up, chin, chin will jut out, etc. So you want to open that up. And so if you connect up the crown of the head with the Wei Lu and you open up those points, then then good stuff happens. But there's one point that I didn't mention. I guess it uh, it doesn't usually come up, but it's a uh, another one that Ching Ma Ching talks about and 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 uh, Yang Ming, Jing Ming, and uh, other people who say that you want to, um, that a lot of people get, uh, get 
kinked at, and that is the point opposite the middle dantian. So the middle dantian is connected up with the heart energy, and it's right here, right around your solar plexus, that that kind of kind of area. So right opposite that on your spine at at the um, T6, the sixth thoracic vertebra is um, is the location just under your shoulder blades, and that's a um, um, what's that called? I think it's called. Uh, Ying Tai, maybe something like that. Uh, Lin, Lin Tai, I think, is. Uh, but it's uh, there's a number of names for it. But the, I just like to think about the the uh, the middle of the back. It's one of those things that we don't really bring much awareness to because we can't see it and it's hard to even reach there. It's uh, so it kind of we kind of ignore the uh, that point that area between the shoulder blades. But a lot of us, and I was surprised in the group we were talking the other night. It was like about half people there have some some kinkage in that spot. And so uh, uh, it's, a, it's an important thing to unkink. And so I like to spend some time focusing on that. So the, uh, that sixth uh, thoracic uh, vertebra, that's uh, the uh, acupuncture point is uh, the GV10 or do 10. And that's um, on the governing vessel. And so it's, uh, uh, this is a cool little tool here. Um, for those of us who can't reach back there, if you go back here, you can locate your, ah, oh, there's, my, there's my shoulder blade, right? And so just around there is my, is my, uh, that point, right? So I, uh, I can use this device to kind of poke in there and it, by bringing awareness to that area and breathing into it, then it allows some energy to release. Because a, a lot of why the energy gets stuck there is the fact that we're not aware of it, you know, and I go to, I do a feel on the other side and it feels really good to kind of just poke in there and, uh, and so it's also nice if you get a, uh, a massage therapist or I have my, my favorite polarity therapist works on me uh, on, a, on a regular basis. And, and so we get to, get to clear along the, uh, along the spine there. So the, uh, that allows the energy to move much more freely. So, but if you have pain there, if you have constriction there, tightness, then there is, most likely a, um, an energy that is jammed up there because uh, muscles are, are contracting uh, that you're not necessarily aware of. You don't know that you are making your muscles tighten up there, but you are. And uh, so learning how to untighten those is a real handy thing to do. And um, one thing uh, I, I would recommend is to just kind of lean back in your chair and just kind of feel into that, that area. See if you can make contact with that point. And you know, you may have to stick a pillow there or a tennis ball or you know, get one of those neat little devices there with the, with the, the, the hook. Um, but you want to feel into that. And if you can bring awareness to that area and breathe into it and just say, okay, let it go, send some love there, then the energy moves. We bring the energy to that area and allow it to flow more freely. So that's, uh, so, just bringing your awareness there is a is a big deal, and we're going to do some exercises to uh, to to help with that. Before we go any further, any uh, any questions, thoughts, um, requests, anybody? All good. All good. Okay, let's moving on. 
All right, so um, your ability to flex and extend your spine is super important for your health in general, but also for that flow of chi, for also for any martial application that you want to do, which would involve having a lot of chi. Because any constriction we have, any kink in the hose is going to, first of all, make you weaker. You're not gonna have as much juice available to you. And second of all, it's um, uh, it's going to reduce your vitality. So you're um, you want to have that that available to you and uh, connect up. So the ability to flex and extend the spine is a super important uh, thing, and that's why. I've included a number of exercises within the uh, Reclaiming Lost Territory set. We did a bunch of those back in the summer. And uh, so I'd like to go over some of those again, this time paying specific attention to that, to getting the, uh, to feeling into that, that point in your, in, your, in your back and bringing your awareness to that so that you can allow things to flow more freely. All right, so let's, uh, why don't we stand up? Okay, so uh, let's just go right to those exercises. So the, the first one is to relax the spine and roll down your, you know, by very gently, slowly, one vertebra at a time, release. So we're going to start standing up vertical and, and then just bring in your chin and just open up the topmost vertebra. And then go take a breath and then relax the next one. And as you get more familiar with it, you can really tune into each vertebra. But the, uh, for the time being, just do your best. And take your time going down. Use your breath to release muscular tension. So notice that I'm supporting my body. So everything below the verte vertebrae that I'm working with I, is still vertical. Keep your chin to your chest as you go down. Knees are bent. And the other thing is you wanna reach with the crown of your head. So instead of just bending, you're lengthening the spine. You're releasing tension, letting go. And when you get to that area, right there in your mid back, just below your scapula, pause, and just hang there. And breathe into it. Everything above it, all the vertebrae above it, just let them let them go, let them hang. Let your arms just hang down. And now continue down. Keep reaching with the crown of your head, lengthening the spine as you go.
and straighten your knees and continue to drop. And then bend your knees and slowly come up and start to stack the vertebrae up again. And take it up until you run into that point there. That we're talking about there, just under the scapula. And just hang there. And then continue stacking up the vertebrae. Lengthening the spine, Read, keep reaching with the crown of your head. Lengthening, making yourself taller, creating space in the spine. And just hang there a moment. Feel into that. And bring your hands up. Open. Arch the back. Reaching with the crown of the head, lengthening the spine, opening the shoulders, opening the chest. And bring awareness to that area. That area at uh, GV10. And come up. and round your back. And then arch your back, open, deep breath, and exhale, round your back. And inhale, open, and exhale. Round the back. I'll turn sideways, you can see. Inhale, you're arching. Ah, exhale, rounding. Good. And just hang there a moment and just allow that to unwind. And feel the energy circulating throughout your whole body. You should feel a lot of chi in your hands right now. And bring your awareness to other parts of the body and notice that there is some tingling, pulsing. The stuff going on there. Feel into the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of your head. Allow that energy to circulate. Right, now let's do the big circles and we're gonna do a similar kind of thing. So inhale, Arch your back, 
Exhale, round your back, sink, and inhale. Arch your back, and exhale, round your back. Good, and reverse it. Inhale, arch the back, and exhale, reach out, sink down, and inhale. And bring your hands down. Feel into the balls of your feet, reach with the crown of your head, reach with the elbows, open the shoulder joints. Good. Now bring your arms out in front of your body. And I want you to reach with your elbows. So you're not lifting the elbows. You're just reaching out with the elbows, opening up the shoulder joints. And then as you inhale, reach. And feel the stretch. Feel the opening between your shoulder blades. Exhale, relax, and inhale, reach. So feel the expansion in the, uh, in the, in the back between the shoulder blades. So being conscious of this reaching, this opening, allows you to create space in, your, in that area of your back and then allows you to, allows the energy to move more freely. All right, so let's take it and let's do a grand circulation. So feel the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of your head, opening up the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back, your lumbar area, and allow your Wei Lu to drop, your tailbone to drop. Reach with the elbows, open the joints. And lift gently on the perineum so that you actually are feeling contact. And, and you do that whenever you inhale, just as you inhale, you lift gently and as you exhale, relax. Place the tip of your tongue on the, on the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. Breathe through the nose. So it's not something you actually have to do. The energy will do it for you. What we're now, what we're doing is bringing awareness to the different points along the way, along this circulation, so that we can become aware whenever the uh, there's a kink in the hose. So let's begin with the Weilu, the tailbone. You can touch it just to bring your awareness there. You just breathe into that. 
and relax. Next, go to the Ming Men, which is right here at the third lumbar. So opposite of your navel, and breathe into that. You can touch that. I have up to uh, up to uh, GB ten. That point behind, opposite your middle dantian. And feel into that. If you're really flexible, go ahead and touch that. Just feel into that. You can breathe, as you breathe, just feel your back expanding there. Now, uh, this point right here is another point, uh, which I don't think I mentioned, but right where the cervical vertebrae meet the thoracic, this big knobby thing at the collarbone area. So touch that. That's another, another point there, another local stop you want to make. And bring that, bring awareness to that, breathe into that. Now go to the jade pillow gate. Just touch that point, feel into that. Go to the crown. Go to the upper dantian, the third eye. Bring your awareness to that. Bring your awareness to this point on your, just under your nose. Just under your lower lip. Bridge that gap. And here to the clavicular notch. Point right there. Top of your rib cage, right at the base of your throat. Breathe into that. Come down to the middle dantian. Down to the navel. Down to the lower dantian, about halfway between your pubic area and your navel. At the center of your body. Now feel your hui yin. You can lift again on the uh, Carineum. And this is the point, the yin point that connects up the yin channels in the legs, which go down to the bubbling well. Now bring your awareness to all those points and none of them. Simultaneously. Allow your superconscious awareness 
to plug into all of them and breathe deeply into your, all the way through your Dantian, down into the Huyen. Use your diaphragm. And rather than letting the belly expand, allow the, the, the abdominal muscles to relax and just let them hang out there and just continue to just focus on the, the, the um, diaphragm. Feel it pressing down, all the way down to your wind. Just be there with that energy for a moment. Feel it circulating throughout your body. Feel it energizing your bone marrow. Step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. This is where we transmute from chi and into Shen, spirit, to bring the energy, raise the vibration in that super conscious state so that in that highly coherent state, the chi then comes Shen. Grab a seat, please. Okay, anybody, uh, any questions, thoughts, comments, complaints? Dennis, you're on mute, Dennis. You're on mute. Okay, all right. Of the spot you mentioned, we had talked about the Niwan. I didn't hear that mentioned. Is that I that should be the crown? We talk about yes, the crown. That's, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, not the Bawi. Right, right. So just to clarify that the Bawi uh, is uh, uh, GB20, and it's a little forward. It's right about about here, and and. Um, Point of focus I'd like you to, to concentrate on is a little bit behind that. Uh, the primary, although the Bai Hui will be opened by reaching with the with the knee one with the, the with the crown of the head, it'll open that that energy center. But um, I find the people if they, you know, the the advice I, we, we were always given was hang from a thread from the center of your head, you know, from the top of your head. And that that's the way it was. And what I've found is that invariably kinks the hose at the jade pillow gate. 
And so if we go just a little bit behind that to the crown of the head and reach with that, then it opens that and your, your by we will, uh, will open and will the energy will move through that. Very similar to the bubbling well will open if you feel the balls of your feet. So the substantial point is the, uh, is the uh, crown and the insubstantial point is the by hui. So that's the, uh, that's, uh, thank you for bringing that up because that's, that's an important clarification there. Cool. Cool. Anybody else? Lynn. So I have a question about stuck chi. Um, I broke my arm when I was 11 or 12 and it was ill set. And I've had this sort of numb patch the whole rest of my life that is more and less numb, you know, less numb than it used to be. Um, and whenever we do something like this, uh, I'm aware of a block, you know, of the fact that she does go through down into my hands, but I can feel that it's not flowing as freely as say in the other hand. Um, is there any suggestion you have for ways to, you know, just keep doing it and it'll get better or any, any thoughts on that? Um, sometimes it hurts, really hurts. Sometimes it hurts. It, yeah. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Um, one, one thing you can always do is just feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, feel with it, feel, feel it, you know, just bring awareness to it. That brings more chi to it. And that will bring about, chances are you have created some compensatory patterns. So I, I broke a wrist too once and, and I know exactly what you're talking about. There's, we, we compensate for for that, for the damage that gets done. And there's there are little uh, uh, interruptions that, that occur as a result of that. But if you bring your awareness to that, right. just sort of like touching a something that hurts, you know, I mean, I do, I'm doing it right now and it's like, oh, that feels good. I, I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel a, a happy feeling, you know, throughout my whole body when I do that. So it's like, oh, okay. I sometimes forget that, that that part needs a little extra attention, you know, and, and we all have picked up nicks and scrapes from having spent our many decades in the, uh, on planet earth. And, uh, and so this is one way of, of kind of keeping the game going and making it as much fun as possible. <laughs> and, uh, you know, try to rehabilitate that which has been, uh, you know, has been damaged along the way. We, I take some comfort in the fact that we destroy about a trillion cells every day. <laughs> that doesn't sound comforting. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to build them back. So we're constantly throwing away stuff. We're constantly right. rebuilding you know, uh, uh, down to, you know, down to your bones, everything is constantly being, being taken apart and replaced. So if we were, if when we create a, the new, the new guys come in, if we, they have a, an abundance of chi, they get more stuff to play with. If they coming in and there is a deficiency of energy there, a deficiency, a deficiency of, of life force, then say, oh, they come in and say, oh, that's how the game's played here. And they kind of get into that and they kind of, all right, you know, I guess we'll just, you know, hang out and do, do what the, our predecessors did. But if there's a whole bunch of new energy there, then they, you know, they're inclined to do something a little more exciting, a little more adventuresome. That's actually really exciting. That, that feels right when you say that, that I can feel like... <laughs> I could, you know, remind that space that it, you know, has some joy and some, you know, go, go, go. Exactly. If you bring yeah. the love there, if yeah. you just 
talk to it, you know, and say, hey, baby, yeah, we're in this together, you know. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know I've, 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 I hurt you, baby, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still love it. <laughs> yeah, really. I can do better. I can do better. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'm not sure that'll work for me. <laughs> Uh, anybody else? Sandy. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so when we when we create the space and we open the space, is that are you stretching your fascia layers? Um, I've been reading yeah. about the cupping, the cupping stuff and how yeah. your fascia can get like hardened and over time. And yeah. is that kind of what we're doing there? Well, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the same thing as cupping. Sharon's actually an expert on cupping. But the uh, uh, it is we are elongating the fascia, and when we do that, we open up, we create more tensegrity in the system, and also more range of motion. Because you're right, we we do the fascia tends to get kind of bunched up, and what what happens is they um, uh, there are different layers of fascia form the if 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 a pattern is repeated. Over and over again, the body's body mind says, "Hey, this is this is the way we do it around here." So then it says they use these hydrogen bonds to glue the layers of fascia together. So then they get more and more solidified. So a lot of the trouble people have with their backs in that particular area I'm talking about, you know, it'll be resistant maybe initially because it's got these layers of fascia which have glued together. So, you know, opening it up, sometimes you need a little intervention from a, you know, from some healing hands. But uh, if you're patient with it, and you're, you know, becomes part of your practice, that you're opening these areas up, then you'll gradually get more and more range of motion. And, you know, and it certainly beats the alternative of just shriveling up into a raisin. And, you uh, as we get older, so it's like, hey, why not? Just keep, uh, keep, keep playing with it. Keep opening, and uh, uh, I have found that to be useful, a useful way of thinking of it, and also something that has been, you know, pretty successful for me personally to to approach it from that. Like anytime I feel a constriction, I say, oh, okay, that's an area that I need to relax into, release, and create more space. So, yeah. Cool, anybody else? How'd that go today, the, uh, the, 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 the grand circulation? Was that uh, good? Because a couple of days ago, people were saying, I didn't quite feel it. Uh, it was, did you, you, could you feel, feel more, more juju? Valerie. <laughs> Well, uh, particularly because we had had this discussion about the space behind the heart, um, you know, I brought more awareness there uh, and was more successful in what I could feel and, and being able to release more in that area. So uh, just the discussion around it, bringing more awareness made the whole thing more better. Excellent, good. Good. So if you if you personally have run an area area where you feel it's there's a uh, you know a constriction or something that you're not uh, you're not getting, please let me know and we can uh, we can explore that because that's how we uh, that's how we find out these things, you know. So uh, Sharon, I'd just like to mention a practice that I have. I do not when I feel a constricted muscle or an area. When I go to stretch, I do not think of the muscle. I focus on the fascia. I've totally eliminated thinking about muscles and it feels uh, much more expansive and deeper and it opens in a very different way than when I focus on just the muscle. That's, that's a really good point, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, I, I agree with that totally. Another thing is, I, I really never think about stretching. I always think about releasing. So, because stretching, you know, you stretch a rubber band, it's always going to pop back. It's, 
you know, you're, where stretching is kind of a, uh, as a, it's a, there's an effort being applied to, to make something do what it doesn't want to do. And I'd rather get in there and sweet talk and say, hey, baby, come on, let's just, let's just let go here. Come on, let's kind of let it all hang out. And you'd be able to let it, you know, open up rather than, you know, pulling along. So uh, uh, I think we're on the same page there. It's just kind of uh, a very wu-wei approach to, uh, to the uh, connective tissue. So anybody else? Oh, good. Okay, good. So that's the uh, so that's the grand circulation, and I think I mentioned before that I kind of bypass the the micro microcosmic orbit because it uh, to me it's a closed system, and which a lot of people subscribe to and they want to, you know, and, and there's a sense there for some people that you store their your chi in the the lower dantian and. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that idea. I'd rather think that I'm plugged into a, a, an open system where I'm constantly running fresh juju through the system, which then makes it a lot more, uh, a lot, well, a lot more vitality. I'm never really using my own chi. I'm just sort of borrowing it, just like I borrow air from, from the environment. And I borrow it, you know, Run it through some, run it through some hoops, and then uh, then I exhale and take another breath, and uh, same thing with the chi. Um, the uh, you know, key, I think, to this area in the back is is the elbow gin. You know, reaching with the elbows and allowing the back to open. You can also breathe into the back so that you know, breathe in so that you can actually feel the the back expanding, widening. And when you, that happens, then you're allowing a much freer energy movement. Because the energy just doesn't doesn't just go north and south. There's a uh, they call it Jing Lo. Uh, the meridians run kind of north and south, but the um, the low points, or the low energy is, it expands out perpendicular from the meridians, and it goes out into the, into the surrounding area. So we want, whenever you have Boku Chi, you then, it spills out and fills up the whole system not just along the meridians, but it actually goes out in all the, all the cells and it rejuvenates your whole body. So if, uh, for those of us who wanna keep this party going for a little while longer, uh, <laughs> you wanna keep the chi alive, vibrant, moving. You wanna keep a constant exchange with the, with, uh, with the big chi so that there's a conversation going on where you are part of a much larger system. So you still get to be you, you still get to have your own individuality, but you also recognize that, hey, we're all in this together too. So we're plugged into the big chi and that allows us to, to do cool stuff, allows us to go well beyond the perceived limitations that we we have with a closed system. So, uh, I'm blacked out. Here we go. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, um, so anyway, with the grand circulation, this is something. I have to say, I don't think about it that often, but I do it constantly, and it's something I would encourage for everybody. Just kind of get it so that it's. You know, you are so in touch with this, the points along the way that you notice whenever the hose is kinked and that way you can say, aha, I must unkink the hose. And then you can, you know, things flow a lot more freely. Okay, we're wrapping it up now, getting a hook here. Anybody, uh, 
Any closing comments, thoughts, uh, questions? All right, uh, cool. <laughs> okay, the producer's telling me it's time to go. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it feels great. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Love you. Thank, Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Rick. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.